everyone, good afternoon. And once again, we are on the third day of the three days packed event of Job Street. And um, my name again is Jay. I'll be your host again for today. And I hope everyone is still doing fine because I always understand, we always understand that 2020 is very challenging for every one of us, okay? But nothing to worry, the market is reopening and recovery is in progress. And that's very uh, good to hear, right? So as your career partner, Job Street, um, yes, like I said, we are on the third day for the three days event. You still have the last, or actually you still have a chance to interact live with your favorite companies out there, okay? So you just have to uh, click on the chat box so that you can interact with them uh, right on the spot. And if you're lucky enough, you can e even be invited with a one-to-one -one virtual career um, interviews. And not only that, so we understand that you probably are questioning about uh, your profiles. Um, you might be uh, wondering if you're qualified enough to get rich in today's uh, companies, right? So we also partnered or collaborated with Future Learn to offer free certified courses. And these courses are spread across uh, digital marketing, robotics, cybersecurity, finance, HR, and many more. Just have to check, um, check out the website, go to level up your career so you can see further information about these courses. And you heard it right, it's a certified courses and it's free one. And not only that, um, if you have questions or um, doubts about your profiles, like how do you want to uh, improve your, uh, your, your uh, qualities, right? We also have partnered with professional co uh, career coaches to address your questions on the spot. Like you can chat with them as well right on the spot. Just click on the Get Prep with Career Advices on the website too. And having said that, we are also joined today by one of the best uh, career advisor in town, probably not just in town. Um, her name is Ari. Ari, are you there? Hi, Jay. Hey, everyone. Yes, hi, hello, how are you, Ari? I'm great, Jay. It's just kind of sad oh. coming to the end of the career fair already so fast. Yes, that's right. So Ari will be also talking about uh, involving or evolving your skills for the future of work and nowadays. So I'll pass the uh, floor to you, Ari. Thank you so much, Jay, for that introduction and welcome one and all to the last day of the final uh, live stream where I'm going to probably share my screen right now so that you can actually uh, follow me through as well as we talk about this uh, really important topic called evolving your, your skills for the future of work, right? So, you know, when we talk about skills, I mean, this is something that I'm really passionate about as well because, you know, upskilling and learning is really my thing. So I just wanted to kind of find out a little bit, maybe not, I understand maybe not everybody is uh, as passionate about that as me, but I'd like to find out from you is how are you currently evolving your skills for the future of work? Okay, I've got a couple of options here. Maybe you can think about this and where would you fall under? So the first one is, you know, you might fall in this group thinking that it's not necessary. Okay, I've met some job seekers as well in my coaching, uh, career coaching journey as well that says, you know, Ari, it's not necessary. Or it could be cases where you might probably say that, you know, I know it's necessary, but I don't really know where or how to start to go about doing, you know, evolving my skills, especially for the future of work. Oh, you might fall into a third group that says, you know, I, I go ahead and evolve my skills. I, I attend training called an upskill, but only if my company directs me to do it. Otherwise, on my own, I probably won't go ahead and do that. All right? Or do you fall into this fourth group and says that, you know, I look for ways. I actively look for ways to evolve my skills on my own, whether or not my company directs me to do so. So, of course, there could be other reasons as well, but think about which one of these do you fall under, okay? So, that good, it's going to have an implication as well as to, you know, how are you evolving your skills and what I'm going to talk about it in a while, but I'd like you to keep that at the back of your mind, all right? So, if, you know, to many people, uh, upskilling uh, really just, it might be in the third group, right? They just kind of upskill it because their company directs them to do so, or they don't think it's important. But a very successful man like Jack Ma, he once said that, you know, what you do after work determines your future. 
because during your time of work, you're, you're kind of actually upscaling in that particular area. But like for Jack Ma himself as well, you know, he said that when he was at work and he wanted to kind of do something else or he had a passion project he wanted to chase after, he had the time to do it after work. So what you do after work is actually very important. Now, in fact, adding on to that as well, they used to, there was a senior that I spoke to as well. He is in his 70s and he was sharing with me that, you know, when he was uh, in his 30s, he actually started preparing for, you know, towards the time when he retired. And he actually, by in his 30s, he was already planning about what kind of skills and what kind of work that he wanted to do after that when he retired. Uh, and now well in his 70s, he looked back at his journey and he thought about saying, hey, you know, those couple of hours that I spent, I know that he had to, to juggle different, you know, different parts of his life as well because he was married, he had his, his children, he had his work. But he spent just the those little, little hours as well to kind of upskill and get experience. And that really paid off also much later. So while we're upskilling, we also want to kind of recognize that, yes, we are at different life stages. And that's also important to take note of. But what is the impact of that? And I hope those two stories of Jack Ma and the senior kind of inspire you to think about what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to be talking about three things. One is what really is the value if I upskill or reskill? And by the way, these two words are actually different. Then the second topic we're talking about is, you know, what are the critical skills then if I need to upskill and the future of work? And thirdly, of course, is where to start, all right? There's so many resources out there. Where is a good place that I could start off? So let's begin and dive into the first one, which is, you know, let's talk about the value of reskilling. Probably that will give us a picture of why do we even need to bother to reskill or upskill. So let me share with you a little bit about the bigger forces at play, all right? The bigger, wider context there is out there. And with some of these buzzwords that I'm sure by now some of us are familiar with, some of us maybe first time hearing it, but the first word that we're going to be talking about here is this I-4.0. All right, you may have heard of it. You heard it from another name called the Industrial Revolution 4.0. And this has been thrown around a lot, but what does it really mean? Right, it really means, you know, new technologies that come up, you know, interconnectivity, big data, right? We have a lot of data nowadays. Everybody's talking about data as the new oil or the new money. And we talk about having so much of it out there. So that's one of the defining characteristics of today's context. And on top of that all as well, we have new emerging technologies like chatbots. Nowadays, they're so sophisticated, the chatbots, right? That sometimes we're not even sure whether we're talking to a human or a chatbot on the other line. And if you think back about how we've benefited from this as well, we also think back about how, you know, last time when we wanted to book uh, our travel plans, although I know now we're all uh, kind of grounded uh, in Singapore at the moment, but in the past, if we wanted to kind of make a, a plane booking, right, we wanted to book an airline ticket, do you remember we had to go down to those travel agent shops and then they'll give us a printout of, you know, when, when would our flight be? Well, so much has changed, right, the industrial revolution, because everything now is also automated. So that's one of the big driving factors that's driving, you know, today's context. The second one um, that is also driving it is globalization. And we saw this especially a lot last year where, you know, it started, I mean, the impact of COVID-19 just spread so quickly abroad so fast, right? This cause of globalization. And that also impacts the context in which we work today, right? Nowadays, you know, I read news about how um, companies or of, of, of people that used to work in the cities because that's where all the jobs were, they were actually going back to their hometowns because they could actually do remote working, right? They could work from their homes and still be, you know, connected to their workplaces. So globalization has really changed that. And it's also going to change the way that we work in the future, because then in these cases, if you look at it on the, on the flip side as well, jobs that were available, that it was not available to us in other countries could be available to us as well. So globalization, it has an impact in that sense. The third factor that has impacted us is also the demographic changes. 
right? These days we talk about aging population. We talk about how you can see four different generations in the workforce. So it also changes the way that we work with people. It also impacts us the kind of industries that maybe are more at the forefront right now, for example, like healthcare, right? And on top of these three, we also have the one, you know, that I'm sure by now we're all very familiar with that really describes today's business context environment. It's called VUCA, right? Things are very V, stands for volatile. The speed of how much things change is, uh, is increased. The things that are uncertain right now, we can't always plan ahead for the future, right? Things are complex. We used to have, I remember those kind of manuals, right? Whenever we run into a problem, we look at a manual and we kind of see, you know, how to troubleshoot this. But nowadays we don't have that, right? Nowadays we go into Google, we kind of search that out because sometimes things are really complex and maybe there might not even be a solution out there yet. And A stands for ambiguous, where we might not have all the details and it's not very clear to us at that point in time. So I'd like you to keep this at the back of your mind as well, because that really defines the context and how it will also impact the kind of skills that are needed of us to evolve today. So let's go into the next one over here. Oops. So how does it impact us in terms of our skill? Why do we need to then invest in the value of upskilling and reskilling? So first, there is a difference between upskilling and reskilling. So the first one here is about upskilling and we could talk about hard skills or soft skills. So in this case here, uh, upskilling, as you can see, it's still within the same building. So you're kind of progressing in the, in the skills that you are familiar, it's just building on top of that. So for example, you could be a data analyst and if you were to upskill more into the business aspect, well then you'll be, you, you could open doors in terms of the business analyst. So that's what we mean by upskilling, right? The next one we have over here is about reskilling, where as you can see, we're kind of changing our buildings, right? We're going on a whole different trajectory, but upskilling a totally new different area. So that could mean as a, as, as a change of career path. And we saw that as well, where, you know, we, we read about stories of people who were in the airline industries and then they moved on and they reskilled into other areas like, you know, effing F&B entrepreneurs. Uh, some of them moved into uh, healthcare. Some of them moved into as, as a story we will see a little bit more later as well. As they take their skills, they move into a different industry, and in that process as well, they also reskill. So the question here, I guess, for you, is to think about, you know, which. Which path? You might be thinking, which path should I go? Should I upskill and continue down or should I reskill? Well, there are a few guiding questions for you to think about. So the first one we talk about in day one, which was about what is your career brand, right? Why are you upskilling? What's your end goal that you would like to be looking at? So that's going to be the first one that informs you of which route you should take. Also think about, you know, have a pulse on the labor market. Is the industry as well doing growing? If that's the case as well, then that maybe you'd like to focus more into the upskilling portion, right? And you also want to, let's say you have a job that you're really interested in. It's a good time for you to take a look at the job description and see if there's any gaps that you need to probably upskill in, or is it a totally different from what you were previously doing? In which case then, reskilling may be a more uh, viable option for you. So you can also use the skills framework uh, by Skills Future Singapore. They have very different uh, roles that they have on their website. So you can actually also see what are the kind of skill sets that you need. So here's another uh, motivation uh, factor for you of why you know, evolving your skills matter for you. So we always think that, you know, that depth of experience and breadth of experience is very important and probably learning comes right after that, right? But according to a report that was done sometime last year, they surveyed 8,000 over employers and they found that what employers actually value as well is actually evidence of continuous learning. Now, this is my opinion, but I believe that it's because, you know, when things change so fast. Like we talk about today's context where things, the speed of change has changed so fast and things are constantly moving. You know, what kind of experience you had many years ago 
may not be as relevant at this point in time if you don't continuously upskill and you know evolve with it. So I hope you know, in a sense as well, learning. By the way, um, it's very good for the brain when it comes to you know us aging or thinking creatively. It kind of keeps us agile as well. So with that, you know, I hope that gives you an idea of the value of why we need to upskill or to reskill. And the next question that probably pops into your mind and says, you know, what kind of critical skills then should I actually uh, look at in the future of work? Well, here we go. Are you ready? So this one was based off a report on the future of work. Okay, this is in 20, for 2025. So what is the most in-demand skill right now? Well, here it is. Skills are constantly changing. Remember we talk about VUCA, where skills are you know, constantly moving. So what could be critical in the past may not be so critical right now. Or maybe what's critical right now in the, in the future, you know, right, things may change. But here's the good news, at least for the next five years or so, this is what uh, the report has actually identified. So there are four main types of skills that in the next five years or so is going to be actually very critical and what employers are currently looking for in employees or job seekers. So we're going to look at these. I'm going to show you the top 10 and we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, why, why these skills could be important. So the first ones, you can see the ones all in blue color. Those are problem solving skills. So you can see a lot of analytical thinking, complex problem solving, critical thinking, uh, creativity, uh, ideation. These are all problem solving skills. And one of the reasons I believe as well is because remember when we talk about today's context, we talk about there's a lot of data out there. So while the machines are busy, you know, collecting all the data, humans can play a part in terms of how do we make sense of all this data that is in front of us? What kind of insights can we draw from? So that's why, you know, problem solving skills is going to be key. And on top of that as well, uh, I also mentioned that in terms of VUCA environment, it's very complex out there, right? There's a lot of factors that come into play. So we are going to need to make sense of all this information to think about the solution creatively. So I think that's what a lot of employers as well will be looking out for when it comes to the job seekers that apply for their jobs. So that's one, problem solving. The second group of skills um, that are, is going to be very critical is what we call self-management skills. So about active learning, as you can see the ones in green, uh, learning strategies, being resilient, uh, tolerating stress, right? We saw a lot of that, especially uh, in the previous uh, um, presentation by one of the hiring managers talk about adaptability because things again are constantly changing things are volatile so we want to we want to as job seekers remain as well very flexible and able to handle such changes right we look at a problem and we think about how we could adapt to those situations or those stress and I'm, I'm sure working from home as well has increased quite a bit of that right so it's how do we manage that as well in the future, especially our work where it could involve a lot of remote working. Now, the third aspect over here is what you see in brown is what we call working with people. In this case, one of the skills here is about leadership and social influence. And this is largely driven by the fact that, you know, globalization and the demographics changes has got a real big impact because we'll be working with maybe different nationalities, different cultures, different age groups, so that's why our people skills become more at the forefront. Being able to collaborate with a different range of people, being able to communicate as well, these become critical skills when it comes to people, all right? And the last one, which is no surprise, is the ones in the dark blue, which is what we call the technology use and development, right? So in the past, you know, we used to think about how Microsoft uh, Office skills used to be very key. But right now, you know, with all the technology going in Industrial Revolution 4.0, now the new ABCs are actually about artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud com computing, right? These are the things that starts to be important. We should at least know what these means, 
right? And on top of the fact as well, we want to make sure that we can also use our online collaboration skills, right? Nowadays, Zoom seems to be the common platform that we need to be familiarized with. So all these critical skills, as you can see right here, could be areas that we need to be looking at. So the good news about this is that these skills, if you realize, are actually transferable across different industries, even different job levels, right? These days, even if you say, hey, does somebody like a blue collar worker actually need you know, these skills? Well, nowadays they deal with those automated cleaning machines as well. They need to know how to use them. So you see this doesn't uh, have just a specific for a specific job level. So my question for you is that looking at this list, where do you think you're strong at? And where do you think that perhaps you might need a little bit, you need to close the gap with? All right, so maybe that's really something for you to think about because once you know that, then the next step really is about knowing where to start. Where should you start upskilling? Because it's not possible to, you know, focus on all 10 areas at one go unless maybe there's nothing else for you to do except, you know, just really doing this as a full-time job. So where do we start first is really to have a goal in mind. Now, recently I met a job seeker. Uh, actually, last year I've, I've already met her and she shared with me back then that when she lost a job, she was actually looking at new ways to evolve her skills. So um, one of the, the, the courses that she took up was a six months long uh, digital marketing uh, course under a traineeship program. So recently I met up with her because it was coming to the end of her six months. And I was about to congratulate her because I know it's not easy to be going through a course like that. And I said, you know, congratulations. So what are you going to be doing with your, your course after that? Are you excited? And the first thing she told me that she was never going to be working as a digital marketing or a digital marketer in that sense. So what happened? You know, what happened to all those six months? Well, it really starts off again with when we're evolving our skills for the future. What is it that we're trying to achieve with that? And that starts off with the goal. So just as we have goals in life, just as we have goals at work, we also need to have a goal in terms of what is it that we want to upskill in. So as such, you know, we look at it as in terms of specifics. What are we trying to upskill? So I hope that the list of 10 critical skills earlier on gave you some idea of where would you like to focus on. The second is that, you know, you, it needs to be specific as well. What in, uh, sorry, uh, it needs to be measurable as well. What is it that in particular are you trying to, what's the level you're trying to reach? Is it just something that you just good to know or is it something you really want to invest in and it's really something you want to apply? Now that's measurable. The third thing that you want to make sure your learning goal has is needs to be attainable, right? Because, you know, we all have different needs and different uh, things that we need to take care of, like our families, you know, elderly parents, children, our workplace. We need to be, in a sense, make sure that our learning is attainable, right? And like what the senior has also mentioned, it's not really much, you need a big chunk of time, but it's really the small incrementals. Are we taking the effort to then spend a little bit of time. Maybe 10, if 10 minutes is all you can afford, sometimes that is good enough to keep going if you do it every day. And the fourth one, it needs to be relevant, right? When we talk about that, you know, an example, I shared a story of the job seeker who then, you know, who upskilled in digital marketing. What is it that you're trying to do with what you're learning and how can you apply it in your workplace? All right. and, I, and, and I was actually in one of those examples too, where I actually, for, out of fun, I actually took up a course in Python. And I remember that when I took up the course in Python in the first five minutes, I got a headache, all right, because it's not something that was relevant to me. In fact, after one hour, all I could do was to type in and code the word print hello world. All right, is it relevant to what I was doing? Not so much, but now when I think back, about it, you know, I, I probably don't remember much from it except for the word print wall. And the, the fifth one, of course, it must be time bound because there must be some kind of accountability, something that keeps you motivated as well. So that's why having a learning goal, planning how you want to get there to your goal, all right, it's so important. 
But like any plan, anything that we learn as well, we must be prepared. And I, I really love this diagram over here that sometimes whatever we plan doesn't quite match up into reality. So let's be forgiving for ourselves to ourselves as well. And this is also applicable to careers too, because things doesn't always turn out the way that we want to. But that's why having a mindset is agile. So when things doesn't always go up, down our way, what else can we do differently? And I think it's, that's one thing about evolving, about learning helps us to do that. It's because it does keep our mind agile. So there are plenty of resources if you wanted to start off, right? There are a lot of programs out there, like the uh, SG United Skills Program uh, and Jobstreet just now. I think Jay mentioned that as well, where they have this opportunity for you to you know, learn what are some of the two free courses on Future Learn, which is about the essential skills and transferable skills. So make use of these opportunities and put up your hand and say, you know, hey, this is something that I want to go and explore more into. So in summary here, you know, I think that story brings across the value that it is really important to upskill, whether it being at different points, and it's really look, important to also look at critical skills. In this case over here, it was the people skills that she focused on, right? And where to start? You can start anywhere. And really, this is a good time to really start now because there are a lot of resources out there. But it's also really key to have a plan of what is it that you're trying to learn and to achieve out of that. All right, so because you know that in the 21st century, those who are illiterate are not those who can't read and write, but really those who are unwilling to learn, relearn. And that is a famous quote by Alvin Toffler. So, with that, you know, I'm going to move into the QA uh, section right now. And with me, I'm going to be inviting two of my panelists. All right, so we have Winston Chu. Uh, Winston is actually an executive coach and he has worked with, you know, the private and uh, public sector and he's done both, you know, even in the adult learning space as well as in coaching. And I'm also very honoured to have with me Gerald Tan as well. He's a project director of Avoda's People Solution and he is very passionate as well, both about career development as well as skill development. So right now we are going to, um, I'm going to stop my screen share so that you can see all of us uh, uh, on the screen. All right. So hi, Gerald, and hi, Winston. Thank you for joining me on this panel. Hello, everybody. Uh, hi. Thank you. Hi. So maybe before, let's, let's warm up a little, because, you know, because both of you are very passionate about career development as well as, you know, skill development as well. So I'd like to, you know, kind of pick your brains a bit about what your thoughts are about, you know, learning and one's career. So maybe, Gerald, let's, uh, you know, interview you first. What are your thoughts about that? All right. Um, learning as what Ari had mentioned throughout the session, right, it's, it's the secret ingredient for every uh, worker, right? Because every employer is going to have to look towards you on that secret ingredient on how fast are you able to learn, what have you learned in the past, and how you're going to apply what you have learned. So um, I would say that in many times, uh, because of how f fast things are moving, employers also want to get their assurance that the person that they are hiring has a learning mindset. Right. And let me elaborate a little bit here about learning mindset. It's not just about attending courses. It's about being curious about things. It's about looking at things around you and wondering, how did this thing work? How did I, this thing get created? And then diving deeper to understand how it's done and then perhaps trying it yourself. So for me, um, you know, even on a personal level, I enjoy learning. I just completed my plumbing electrician program, right? So that's something that I, I, I did because I just didn't want to pay plumbers to repair my toilet bowl anymore. I want to try to do it myself. And the next thing I want to do is food agriculture. So, so I'm just so interested in what's happening out there. And, and it's with this learning, mind, uh, learning mindset that I have, I want to kind of apply it to different areas and see where it takes me to. Well, thank you, Jared. It's so interesting. You know, you could, you're, you're looking at different aspects as well. And those are very critical skills because, you know, these days, you know, the air cons, we need them so much. And on top of that as well, food is also, sustainability is also a very big uh, issue that, I mean, uh, a key concern out there, right? So yeah, it's remaining, maintaining the curious mind. So Winston, how about you? What are your thoughts about learning and a career? Yeah, so uh, thank you very much. And uh, before I start, Gerald, can I invite you to come to my place to do some plumbing? 
<laughs> no, just kidding. Right. Um, learning is definitely something that we need to embrace. Um, having said this, learning need not be in the classroom. It not, need not be something that is die-die. You must go in front, take your exam. So what I love about learning nowadays is that I can just put on my podcast and I'll start running. And I'll just listen to it. And I'm just learning from some expert. And sometimes uh, I watch YouTube. Uh, just probably about five minutes, 10 minutes, and let, let me get up to speed with what actually happened in the marketplace. And let me think through and reflect through how can I actually use this all this knowledge and apply it in my life. And last but not least, most important thing of all is that do not be afraid to learn. And do not start judging yourself saying that I don't want to start, uh, I don't want to learn because it's like, it's so difficult. That is you judging yourself. What makes you think that is difficult? Can I just invite you all to reflect back when you started off with your smartphone? Last time we used to have button phone, right? So if you think of that, how can, uh, what happened to it right now? You are using it smoothly, seamlessly. Yeah, so keep learning and that is supposed to equip you for the future. Thank you very much, Winston, for sharing that and for giving us, you know, some resources of where we could go to because, you know, interesting, one of the attendants, the attendees also asked, where can they find free courses? So definitely that, you know, the, those, that person who asked that question there, you know, Winston has given you some of the free resources as well that can be actually used. So there was a question here um, from another anonymous attendee, which was, they were asking, is hard skills or soft skills more important when it comes to you know putting it on their resume when it comes to employers looking for it so i wonder if you had any thoughts about that hard skills or soft skills which one is more important so i wonder gerald if you had any thoughts about that you know with hard skills soft skill would they be equal amount of weight or how do they put it on the resume in, the, in that place mm -mm. what's your thoughts um so looking back at my own experiences when i was screening resumes uh and also what i've been advising um uh, people, job seekers, right, on hard skills and soft skills. Um, both of them are actually important. However, uh, for resumes, it's better to have more slanted, to, to slant it more towards hard skills. And by hard skills, what I mean is you need to talk about the knowledge you have, the skills that you have, what you can do, right? And then also some of the other qualities or knowledge that, uh, domains of knowledge that you bring in into your work and your professional brand. Um, soft skills are words like, for example, good team player, uh, uh, excellent communicator, uh, uh, what, and, and, and so many other more uh, soft related, uh, uh, excellent communicator comes out so often, right, that it becomes forgettable. So very much so, I would advise all of you, you know, in terms of the skills, really do a deep dive. Don't go to the surface level of uh, your characteristics or how you do it or your personality because at a resume level, employers are just looking more for what you can do, whether you check the boxes of in terms of helping them to do their work. How you do it, that's the soft skills part. That's assessed during the interview. And they will usually assess that by asking you questions that are competency-based. Competency sorry, competency-based. So for example, if they are looking for someone who is a team player, they might ask you a question such as, Describe a time where you had to work with somebody who was difficult to work with. And then that is their attempt to try to understand whether you are a team player or not. But because over a resume, you can't verify team player, unlike you can verify programming skills or, or, or sales forecasting skills. Yep, you can't verify soft skills. And that's the reason why it's better to display that at the interview stage. Your resume should define more technical skills, hard skills, your knowledge and the domains that you are familiar with. All right, I hope that answers the question. Thank you very much, Gerald. And you know, I agree with you here. I mean, at the end of the day, the resume is kind of like a marketing document, right? So you kind of kind of display what are your hard skills. There's still a way to weave in your soft skills, but you're right that, you know, they are looking at these aspects here. And there are also different ways to actually weave into your resume. I mean, during the parts where you're trying to, you know, a lot of people put it up just right up there into skills and competencies. But there's a way to also weave it into, you know, the response based on achievements of, you know, like what Gerald was mentioning about, right? You know, like customer service skills, this excellent communicator. How would you actually say that as well? It's not just a word that you put there, but you could weave it into your resume. All right. 
if you are interested in some of these uh, free courses, don't forget as well, Job Street does have that two uh, future learn courses, which is the Job Street initiatives. So all those who are you, uh, all those of you who are this uh, career fair, you have access, uh, privilege to that. So please do make use of that as well. And speaking of time, we are actually running, have run out of time over here. I mean, uh, there are still quite a number of good questions here about learning and all. And I think there's a lot of really good resources, but what Gerald and Winston and myself really like to say is about being able to stay curious, all right? And being realistic about the time you have and really go out there and align that to what your passion is all about. So with that, uh, thank you so much, Gerald and Winston, for joining me on this panelist discussion over here. Uh, and uh, over to you, Jay. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you so much, uh, dear career coaches. And it's very lovely to hear about the insights on how you are evolving your skills. I totally agree about, um, you know, like keeping learning. Um, it's not just about evolving your uh, Pokemon boss, <laughs> right? So it's also like evolving your skill because competitiveness is very high out there. So you have to be, uh, remain competitive as well. And with that said, uh, yeah, like I mentioned always, JobStreet has uh, been collaborating with Future Learn. Uh, so you can always uh, check out the website, our career fair website, um, so you can uh, get more information about the, um, the courses. And again, it's a certified courses and it's free. You can get a certification after these courses, uh, right? I am very, you know what, I'm very sad to inform everyone that this is actually our last uh, live streaming for this event, but definitely not the last time that we're going to see each other again. And uh, Job Street is committed to help you to make the most of your opportunity. So keep in touch. We will always be here to uh, support um, every individual to find your best career. Um, remember again to visit the website. If you still have questions, you can always um, keep in touch with our career coaches and you can even also chat with our um, wide range of uh, companies that are participating in this um, career fair event. All right, hope to see you guys again and you all have a great day. Bye for now everyone. <laughs>